Hello, welcome back to my little series on um, different books and materials that I'm using for my little homeschool adventure. Um, I'm calling it an adventure because it certainly is one. It's not a thing that I had actually ever dreamt that I would be doing. I didn't think I would have been homeschooling. Um, so after five children, the youngest one now at the age of 10 is being homeschooled. Um, so this video, I'm going to show you what I'm using for creative writing. Um, I think um, a lot of uh, children's uh, TV shows and computer games and a lot of the um, literature they're reading now uh, is kind of can be make a child's imagination quite wooden because there's a very fast uh, satisfaction. You know, you read a book that doesn't take much effort um, or you read, you're watching computer games that are you know, they're, they're, it's, it's a very visual, you know, you don't have to put a lot of brain effort into, um, into the satisfaction that you get from the action. Um, and you know from your own experience that sometimes the books that are the most satisfying are the ones that take effort to read, like Lord of the Rings, for example, isn't an easy read. You have to decide to read it and you're not going to read it in a night. It takes some time investment and so, um, a, the same with, with children's literature that sometimes the things that are more satisfying to both read and to actually a, do are the things that take more effort than something that is just very fast and a, a quick a quick um, quick result um, so creative writing I, I think so and, and I think I, I you might know I worked in the libraries years ago and and I did notice that a lot of the literature that children were reading were the ones that were very, you know, books that were nearly written by computers, you know, series. There's dozens of books in the same series and they're all the same, you know, variations of the same thing. Um, so children weren't being challenged in their reading. Um, and that is going to overflow into what they write. Um, so with that in mind, I have, so I'm aiming to, um, to try and really, you know, draw up that level in, in, in this child. Um, she's 10. Um, so I'm just going to show five books because I think the last video I think it was just a bit <laughs> too long and uh, long-winded so I want to try and be a little bit more concise to make the videos a bit more watchable. So first of all um, this is a book I got so that we um, start I started a homeschooling literally at the start of lockdown this year so almost a year now last year so almost a year um, and this was one of the books that I ordered um, very quickly, a, just to kind of, at that time I was, didn't think it was going to be a long term thing at all. Um, so this was just one just to help kind of make it a bit more interesting. Um, but I've actually found it really, really good. So a, Usborne, as you know, um, Usborne, very long established a children's publishing company. And um, so my first writing book. Um, so it just gives the, the kind of concepts of um, how, to, how to write, how to make up characters, um, how to use your imagination, how to make stories a little bit more interesting, how to structure them. And it's, it's quite a, um, a, a kind of a child's level, really. Um, but when you're kind of starting off trying to get a child to really use their imagination and try to dig a bit deeper than just, I did this, I did that, I did the other, this is nice, that is nice. You know, so it kind of get them out of the, the wooden kind of um, way of writing and thinking. So this, it gives lots of little different scenarios. And all. So I, I really like this book. Um, really, and she loves doing it, I must say. And a lot of the time, a book would be great if the child doesn't like it. It doesn't really matter if the content is good. The child has to like it or they're not going to be engaged. And then this is the follow on from that one. The, it's Osborne as well. Um, and it just goes a little bit more deeply into just adventure scenarios. So you've got uh, pirates and space and being uh, falling over a cliff and how you're going to get rescued and uh, spooky, lost on a desert island, lost in a, a woods. So all sorts of different days, uh, an alien invasion. So just things um, that, uh, just interesting kind of situations that people get um, might find themselves involved in a shark attack and um, radioactive rats. So they're just showing a child, you know, the different rather than you know just the usual inside the box things. And what's nice is that on the inside, 
on the, on the side of the pages, there's just different kind of interesting words that they might try to incorporate into the story. So really nice. Um, this is one I got, um, but I think I, I, I really love these books, but I think this particular one is maybe for a slightly younger age. Um, there are these a series of books, Fun Schooling by um, funschoolingbooks.com. Thinking Tree Publishing Company, and they've they've loads of different ones. Can okay, you see those kind of closely um, covering different subjects? We have another one I'll show you another day. It's a fun a fun schooling. Yum, it's called Yum Schooling, and it's a cookery one. And a, she has to get all the ingredients and weigh, and then you have to draw a picture of the thing you baked and write um, write out what you did and what you thought and how you could improve so it's that's a really nice one but this one is is really nice as well they're just really nicely um illustrated and so on but i just think it might be a little bit on the little bit more childish level for a 10 year old um but anyway she does li like it on some days for example there she has to um um draw a treat and then find your house search your house for 10 five letter words Search your house for ten six-letter words. Search your house for ten, you know, eight-letter words and things. Um, but the pictures are really nice, and you can kind of get little conversations going about the pictures. And um, but what I do like about this book is at the very back, it has um, and there's lots of colouring in and um, use every letter of the alphabet in only ten words. So it's a little bit kind of a do them. But at the back here they have. A section write a short story about this picture so the child looks at the picture and then comes up with a little story in their mind um, there's a you know sort of be interesting to get them um, going um, let's see for example there's a little monster and a, a story about a cupcake What's this one about? You know, so just nice little illustrations. Of, um, so I, li I like the, I like these books a lot. Um, and they're nice on a day when it's kind of the child maybe isn't particularly motivated. That something that is just a little bit more fast and fun. And you still you still done, done things. Now this one. Um, so this girl, Josephine Nabisco, I think pre presume that's how you pronounce it. And illustrated by Evan Montanari. Now Eve... Eve, Eva Montanari, if you're um, a Catholic parent, you might have already come upon some of her uh, other books, which are really nice, The Weight of a Mass and Bring It to the Queen. Um, but her books aren't all, and that one there, A, a Story of St. Francis and so on. But, and she also has two lovely ones, and I'll show you them in, another time, um, is two books about the the death of a grandparent is really they're really nicely done um, but this one is actually she has actually won awards for this because it's actually a creative writing um, program so what it does is so we've got these characters so you've got a, uh, the lion is kind of the main person and then you've got cow and a little uh, what have we got a hippopotamus a duck you know and penguin and so on and it brings you through stories, but as it, uh, the child doesn't even realise how much they're learning, just it brings them through how to draw out their imagination. And the idea is that, so you're, if you're writing a story or telling a tale, you have a picture in your mind or you've got a scenario. And what you're trying to do is get that picture, that exact picture that's in your mind, into the mind of the reader or the listener, whatever it is. Um, and how do you do that? You know, so you say I went down, um, I tripped on the ground. So what did I trip on? I tripped on a, a, a bramble. It was a rain. You know, and just to, you're trying to actually get them them to think, how can I better get this picture into the other person's mind? Um, so it's very good. Um, this there's a little, there's a few little interactive things in it as well. Oh yeah, for this one here it says, what is this? feel like and it's a little um, piece of sort of rough netting kind of thing and then it goes as a whole section into into doing that what it is and what it sounds like what it smells like a little scratch and sniff here 
and um, what it tastes like. So you're trying to describe, you don't just say something is nice. So my father was actually a, a primary school teacher and if you use the word nice, you, know, <laughs> you, you knew about it, you know, so, and there's a little, there's a little sound there, but I think that actually just needs a new battery. Um, this is really, really nice and it's the sort of one you can go through quite slowly. And it, it seems like you're just reading a nice book, but the child is learning a, a lot from it. And then the last book I'm going to show you is this one here, which I have just recently purchased. And um, it's called Descriptosaurus. And it says it's for eight to 14 years old, but I would consider even a, um, a teenager, an older teenager or anyone who's writing actually um, could definitely use this book. So it, what it does is it's a bit like a thesaurus, but a little bit more expanded um, with the aim of um, using it for creative writing. So it has, so in the table of contents, it has, um, first of all, it tells you how to use the book, but basically it's quite easy to understand. So it has settings, characters, um, creatures, and then additional vocabulary. So under settings, for example, it has forests and woods, mountains, caves, beaches, islands, volcanoes, deserts, ground and paths, streams, sea and waves, and then atmosphere, time of day, seasons, rain, mist and fog, wind and thunder. So whatever scenario the child is writing about, you can um, a, go, help them to go into more um, more imaginative detail or more, more um, just more beautiful way of putting things. Or just, So for example here, um, it has cities, towns and villages. So we have here nouns, adjectives and then verbs and then phrases. So we have cafes, restaurants, shops, malls, stalls, markets, art galleries. So it gets a child thinking about more than just, oh, this, you know, just saying, I walked down the street. Now they can say, hey, I walked past the busy, lively, well-lit street. Then it was um, bustling, you know, and then it has here little phrases, busy, colourful city, bustling, market town, quaint, fishing village. And then it also has um, just nicer ways of putting things um, lived in a rundown part of town huddled around the village green overlooked the sea alive with smells from the food stalls and then sentences for example so they could use these as practice for the village was no more than a pile of stones and shattered walls so that gives a kind of very good very imaginative um, sort of way and kind of very good for going along with this book because this one you're trying to get a picture from your head into the other person's head and this one can help the child to do that. So that's um, what I use for creative writing and sometimes just talking as well. There's, you can't be talking sometimes um, for helping a child draw them out and remember that it takes a lot of time for a child to actually really learn this because they're not used to it in general. They're used to a very quick fix. Um, so I hope that's been helpful and I'll make another video now in the next few days. So thanks for watching. Bye.